Essentially, this is spaghetti with bacon and tomatoes. The Italians call it a matriciana, and they use pig cheek and sheep's milk cheese. You need it in your repertoire. Let me show you how to make it. This is guanciale. Guanciale comes from the guancia, the cheek. And in order for this dish to be authentic, you should use guanciale. You can use pancetta, it'll be delicious. You can use bacon, it'll be delicious. But it won't be authentic. But as you'll find out, there's no way to make this dish authentic in the United States anyway. It's true. Okay, it's a cured, highly fatty pig's cheek. You want, you want like a quarter pound of guanciale. It's a lot. The Romans will tell you that this is their dish. They do bucatini, which is like a fat spaghetti with a hole in it. But why is it called Amatriciana? Why is there a town called Amatrice? Which literally on the entrance to their town says, city of spaghetti of Amatriciana. These are the people that created the dish. And the legend is that they were sheep herders because it's a mountaintop town. And they couldn't bring olive oil up the hill because it was too heavy. So they would slaughter their pigs and that's where they got the fat from. Now, ironically, I'm gonna use a little bit of olive oil. It is against the rules. You've gotta have a little bit of oil in the pan just to get it started. Very nice. Pasta water. If you do this in the metric system, it's a lot easier. For a pound of pasta, which is 500, 50 grams of salt, 500 grams, five liters, roughly a gallon. So here's a gallon, 50 grams of salt. And you're gonna look at it and you're gonna go, oh, that's a lot of salt, I don't wanna eat all that salt. Most of it goes down the drain. Mm. So, you know, if you want, you can do something like that. So tradition says no onion. Tradition says no garlic. A Michelin starred chef was just caught using garlic in his amatrichana. So here's a trick to get garlic in a dish and be able to take it out. Obviously you could put a whole clove in, that works great. But my Italian friends showed this to me. You just kind of score it, not all the way through. And, and when this gets hot, it sort of splays open and allows the inner flavors of the garlic, you know, to come out. So, this looks uh, quite good. Pull it out with a slotted spoon, leave that fat behind. Fat and herbs, and already it smells delicious. Right into the fat. At least I like to try to make the onion cut be a similar size as the pasta that I'm using. So if you want a chunky onion, then you should use rigatoni. If you're gonna use spaghetti, then you kinda want like, you know, a finer cut. That's the way I feel. I think it makes sense. So, you know, you can just something like Something like this is the size of these spaghetti that we have. Here we go. Pound of pasta. Something like... No olive oil. Just salty water. You want to put some red pepper flakes? Great. The traditional recipe calls for a whole dried pepperoncino like that. Okay, so we got a nice color. Really nice color. You can see the garlic that I was talking about. You see how it has done exactly what I want it to do. Goodbye garlic. Here comes some tomato paste. Two tablespoons. Something like that. The traditional recipe calls for some white wine. Now you pull the hot pepper out. And we go in with the tomatoes. Whole can of tomatoes. Take a little pasta water from here. Swirl it around, get every last bit out of the can. Break the tomatoes. So that can simmer for 20 minutes. You can have it on high heat for five minutes. You can put it in the fridge and have it the next day. It's pretty much whatever you want. At this point, now that the pan temperature is down, you're gonna return the guanciale to the pan and essentially it now braises through. 
even more cheese than the guanciale. No joke. Pecorino is much saltier than parmesan. I think it's delicious. Kids like it better. It's a sharp, salty, semi-soft cheese. Okay, so you wanna undercook your pasta, right? What's happening in here? The water's penetrating the pasta. If you undercook the pasta and then cook it with the sauce, it's going to be continually penetrated, but now by sauce rather than water. I'll take some Pecorino Romano, and you're gonna sprinkle that on, and you can stir it. At this point, you can kill the heat. The pan is hot enough. So if you take some tongs now, and you pull out a big chunk like this, and then, sort of do like a spaghetti twirl in. Oh, baby. A little more Pecorino Romano, which is the only cheese you're allowed to use. If you take some basil, I like the tiny ones, they look really pretty. And that is son of a matriciana. It follows the rules, it knows the rules, it breaks them kindly and respectfully. This is delicious. If you make it, you'll be a hero. Go for it, it's so good.